Yes, great as always to have you with us. Craig, what are you doing? What's wrong? What's wrong? What do you mean? Haven't you learned anything from Sandra Sully? The secret to a successful show is to use a whole lot of piss lame puns whenever you talk to oh, camera. Oh, she loves piss lame puns, doesn't oh, she? She's the queen of the yeah. pun. Check out, if you didn't see it, check out her extraordinary cricket puns here recently on Australia's brainiest cricketer. So let's look at the batting order standing in our prestigious pavilion tonight. Taking the new ball and opening the bowling, taking the cherry for the second over, it's only the opening partnership here. Our cricketers have handled the mystery balls with aplomb so far. Well, we haven't reached the silly point at this moment, but some of our cricketing legends have certainly bowled this maiden over with their knowledge. Well, that's six and a half for me. I'm Sandra Sully. See you next time. Good luck. Truly piss lame. I, I almost expect her at the end there to say, I'm Sandra Gully. <laughs> Speaking of cricket, though, I mean, how good was Jason Gillespie's performance against Bangladesh? Well, of course, the key word there is Bangladesh. Yeah, very but, good. Uh, still 201 unbeaten, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Not a bad effort from Dizzy. Highest score ever by a night watchman. And already the Bradman comparisons are being made. Oh, I think he's better than Bradman. Oh, much better than Bradman. Much better. I mean, let's compare the stats. Uh, let's have a look at their respective careers against Bangladesh. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Yeah. Dizzy whips the Don, absolutely whips him. I think it's about time, too, we replace that Bradman Museum. It's time that Bowerall paid tribute to the much better batsman. Here we are at we are the Bradman Museum. That's more like it. <laughs> and the mullet. Ah, oh, the mullet. It suits. Dizzy already. It suits the dog. Sorry, mate. Well, look out. We're just at the Gillespie Museum, have you heard? Bradman's out, mate. It's the Gillespie. You don't want to stay around for the Gillespie Museum? No, I'd be happy if you took that off. Not happy with the mullet? No, we're not. <laughs> okay. I was washing! I did the laundry by myself! I had all these red and white clothes of mine! And all Did I pause to think? I forgot to separate whites from red. Now all our clothes are pink. Well, it's one, two, three, four. Looking kind of Nancy. Now my clothes are pink. I'm feeling like a pansy. All my rock star cred is down the sink. I think it's four, five, six, seven. Who's a sissy fellow? I'll never score again with Renee Zellweger. I'm right in my head is colored pink. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, we will have to interrupt the show now for some breaking news. We've been receiving reports since we came on air, and I think we can now confirm it. This may be a world first that Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes had a baby girl just ten days ago. <laughs> what a scoop! How did we find that? Now, I follow the news closely. I did not know she was even pregnant. But look, obviously, uh, we should pass on our congratulations to the happy parents. Yeah. Uh, it's a great moment for Tom. Needs a big increase in his childcare responsibilities. Obviously, now got to look after both Katie and the baby. So it's going to be oh. very difficult for him. True, it's going to be hard. Apparently, they've uh, decided to name the child Suri, mm. uh, which is a Hebrew word meaning future Scientologist. Yes. Uh, <laughs> The Scientologists have all these weird beliefs, don't they? Like, they believe they that an alien was involved in bringing humans to the planet Earth, and they have this thing about silent birth, too. There's a rule that says you're not allowed to uh, make any loud screaming or emotional outbursts, unless, mm. of course, it's on the Oprah Winfrey show, in which case, <laughs> absolutely fine. Look, sadly, we're not all as lucky as young Suri. Ooh. We're not all just born into Scientology. Normally, if you want to join, you have to take one of those free personality tests. Yeah, that's right. You often see them in the street, and they have this strange machine which is called an e-meter. Yeah, it sounds yeah. great. It's technical and weird, it sounds. Mm. And we thought there might actually just be a better way of recruiting people to Scientology. <laughs> Would you like to do a free gullibility test today, sir? We're just conducting a gullibility test. Right. Um, and you're doing very well already, actually, yeah. so well done. Um, I'm just going to read you a few statements. You don't have to actually believe them, but if you could believe them, just give us a yes, okay? okay. Scientology lets you attain several different states of existence in just one lifetime. No. Could? You could believe that? I could, could believe yeah. that. Okay, good. Could you believe that it's a coincidence that a famous science fiction writer also invented a completely true religion involving aliens and spacecraft? You don't, you don't have to believe it now. Do you, do you think oh, you're cool. of believing it? Oh, look, I could believe anything. Yeah, okay. Give me a couple of drinks. <laughs> what are you what looking for? Excellent. <laughs> uh, could you believe right now dead people's souls are flying around and clinging to you, and that's what's causing everything that goes wrong in your life? <laughs> totally. 
Not everything, but yeah, I do believe like Some of the... Okay, good. Oh, no, that would be my ex-girlfriend. If it's 75 million years ago, the Earth was... Don't believe that? No. Could you believe that? No. No, with intensive therapy, some courses. Oh. Maybe a few donations. M maybe, I suppose. Possibly. If I had enough invested in it. Okay. Yeah, maybe. All right, well, you will have enough invested in it. Don't <laughs> worry. 75 million years ago, Xenu froze hundreds of billions of people and dropped them into volcanoes on Earth before blowing them up with hydrogen bombs. Jeez, that's a bit harsh, but yeah, I can do that. I don't see why aliens would be using hydrogen bombs. Sure. Could you believe that Tom Cruise is a completely normal human being? No. Right, OK. Well, you've, you've scored very highly on everything else, but even that... It's a bit much. just can't believe it. There's no doubt that he's completely sane. Are you being serious? I don't know. Well, that, that's a good question. <laughs> if you believe that, you're actually too gullible for the government. <laughs> To make this fully scientific, we do need to check your reading on the BS meter. We're testing whether you're true, gullible, or James Packer. Now, the James Packer is not a reference to Scientology, that's just a reference to one tell, actually. How does it feel to you? Does it, it's okay. Does it feel scientific? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. scientific enough? Yes. Do you like to take a test? No, that's fine. No, it's free. <laughs> no, no, I'm the, I'm the official from the church, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, fine. all right. Well, uh, if we get any people who pass, we'll send them in, eh? Okay. <laughs> Last week, Rolf Harris unveiled the most important painting of his life, a portrait of the Queen on her 80th birthday. And this week, it's Christo's turn. Join the celebrated artist as he wraps Her Majesty from head to toe. Sit still, woman, damn it! The Queen by Christo. 7.30 Sunday on ABC. Where's that other corgi gone?